Hello, and welcome to a brief introduction to quantum mechanics. Seriously, it's not as hard as rocket science. And if a beaver can handle rocket science, well, our knowledge of quantum mechanics should take off. Let's begin by looking at the one-dimensional potential well. It exists in both a finite and infinite form, but we'll begin by looking at the infinite potential well, where a zero energy state is trapped between potential energies that go to infinity on either side. In classical mechanics, in a frictionless environment, a ball released with some energy inside the well would fall to the bottom of the well and then bounce back and forth. This would hold true for any energy it was released with. In quantum mechanics, however, the ball does not fall to the bottom of the potential well, but instead oscillates at a variety of energy eigenstates found within the well. The first energy state, designated E1, looks a bit like a jump rope. The second energy state, designated E2, looks like an oscillating sine wave with a wavelength of half that of the energy level E1. The pattern becomes obvious at the third eigenstate. There are two notes for the third, one for the second, and zero for the first. Of course, there are also nodes at either side. In a finite potential well, these nodes on these sides do not exist, as a small amount of the energy escapes into the outer regions of the potential well. Now, Let's look at a simple harmonic oscillator. There are three main kinds of harmonic oscillators. First is circular motion. The second is a sine or cosine wave. And the third is a mass on a spring. Let's focus on that mass on a spring for a second here, shall we? As it first begins moving, it goes very slow and speeds up towards the center, and then repeats this on the way back. This parabolic motion is the first state in a quantum harmonic oscillator, which, as you can see, looks similar to the finite potential well. Each of the following energy states also follows a similar pattern. Now, let's look at a hydrogen atom. First, we'll begin by picturing our planet, Earth. We have a moon which happily rotates around our planet. What would this look like if we zoomed in to an atomic level and applied the same logic? Put simply, the electron would crash. Since the Bohr model of a hydrogen atom is pretty simple, let's instead look at the Bohr model of a carbon atom. Bohr believed that electrons rotated in shells around the center of the atom. De Broglie added that since electrons also sometimes behave like waves, the energy states must be located at integer multiples of the electron's wave-like part. We now believe that electrons fill orbitals that increase in energy, beginning with 1s and proceeding to 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, and so on. Aside from the s orbitals, the shapes of these orbitals are not spherical. In quantum mechanics, it's impossible to know a particle's speed and position at the same time. To understand why, we turn to a man named Schrodinger. Schrodinger was well known for having a cat. Me. What is certain is that Schrodinger had a one. And every night, he would have to get up several hours before her. This meant that he often got dressed in the dark so as to not wake her up. Now, Schrodinger had four kinds of socks. Like tall socks and short socks, and he liked red socks and brown socks. Unfortunately, getting dressed in the dark meant that he never wore matching socks. His co-workers found this amusing. So one day, Schrodinger decided that he would take all of his socks and put them in two drawers. A brown drawer and a red drawer. And then, in the morning, he would simply have to pick two tall socks or two short socks out of one drawer, and he would have a matching pair of socks. So, the next morning, he got up. He walked over to his drawers, he reached in one drawer, and he pulled out two socks. While these socks were the same length, they were unfortunately two different colors, and he was still laughed at. Quantum mechanics applied to the macroscopic world. We'd have a lot of issues. 